Okay, so you have a Suriname cherry plant and you're wondering what its growing requirements are. How much sun, winter protection, what type of root system the plant has. Do you need two to get fruit? Or maybe one will do. Well, those are some of the questions I'm going to answer for you today. So keep on watching. If you never heard of Suriname cherry before, that's all right. It's not one of those plants you are going to see commonly anywhere besides where it naturally grows, which is going to be in tropical areas. But you can also find it in South Florida and now you can find it in Arizona as well. Now, let me tell you a little more about Suriname cherry. Another name for Suriname cherry, it's also Brazilian cherry. And the reason they call it a cherry is because just like the picture you see on the screen right now, it looks like a little cherry. To me, I describe it as a, a small pumpkin. Now, this plant right here, it's actually one of the easiest tropical plants that you can grow in non-tropical areas. The fruits are an acquired taste. And the reason I say that is because to me, they, the skin tastes like curry, curry leaves. And the flesh is extremely sweet. I don't really like curry leaves, but you know what? I love this fruit. They come in two different varieties. Normally, you're gonna have chamba, which is gonna be the red variety. And you're also gonna have lolita, which is what I have the most right now. And those are going to be black. Unfortunately, right now, they are out of season because we had a lot of winds and whatever fruits they were on the plants uh, completely dropped. But that's all right because today we are talking about the growing conditions for this plant. Let's go ahead and start with uh, sun requirements. This is my Suriname cherry. It has been in the ground for a few years now. I lost count, maybe three years. Now, sun requirements, guys full sun anywhere in the United States. Now in extreme temperatures, your Suriname cherry is going to sunburn. And what does sunburn look like? It looks just like that. And that, you're gonna get that throughout your plant, especially if the temperatures are consistently over 100 degrees without any clouds in the sky. This is normal and usually you will experience more of some uh, of this sunburn the first summer you plant in the ground simply because as your plant gets older it will become stronger and you will notice it less and also it's going to get bigger and be able to shape its own self. In areas with milder temperatures you are not going to get this. Can it grow in the shade? Yes. Normally in the shade your leaves are going to get a lot bigger really green nice looking but i've noticed in the shade uh, they don't really fruit as much so you actually need sun all right let's talk about winter protection this plant surprisingly in my area it's only frost sensitive the coldest temperature this plant specifically has taken in the winter time is 19 degrees that is cold it was 19 degrees like for 12 hours straight without any single breaks and on top of that the plant also had frost on top of it and still made it yes the only thing you're going to experience in the winter is usually the color the temperatures get your leaves are going to turn red that is normal don't worry about it in colder climates or if you are really worried about your plant taking damage in the winter time all it needs is just a blanket over it and it's good to go now the only problem you're going to have though at 19 degrees is prolonged exposure to 19 degrees that's going to freeze your ground and if your ground freezes it's going to damage the root system of your plant so obviously if you stay in the teens for that long to the point where the ground freezes you may have issues but if your ground does not freeze and you're briefly in the low 20s or even in the high teens you should be able to grow this plant without any issues because this plant right here I do not protect in the winter time and it grows just fine even the container plants do just fine in the winter time with mild frost let's talk about the root system of this plant the root system of this plant is shallow it also has a fibrous root system what that means is the roots of your plant are gonna be very tiny and hardly noticeable even if the plant is fully root, uh, rooted in the container even root bound your roots are gonna be tiny why is that important for you to know? Well, it is non-invasive, so you can plant it anywhere you want and you shouldn't have to worry about the plant damaging any structures. All right, let's talk about pollination. How many plants do you need to get fruit? Well, this plant is self-pollinating, meaning you only need one plant to get fruit. 
fruiting season for this plant is normally for me in my area it's going to be late spring you're going to get flowers and within just I would say two three months the fruits ripen fully and then you can eat them in my area they only flower and fruit once sometimes depending on the temperatures that year they may flower again in the fall but those fruits normally do not hold well and most of them drop in my area because my temperatures are not consistent this happens because here plants in the fall think it's spring with uh, hot days and cold nights and that triggers flowering remember your plants are going to always react to the ambient temperatures around your plant and not what a textbook tells you like when the plant is supposed to fruit but yes yeah, self-pollinating and depending on your area just as soon as the night temperatures start warming up your plants gonna flower and within a few months you can eat the fruits unfortunately it's only gonna be once a year at least in my area I don't know in tropical areas if they fruit throughout the year or not but if you live in a tropical area comment below and let me know let's talk about watering remember about the type of root system of your plant that is extremely important for you to understand the type of root system of your plant to understand how to water it in containers you always follow the 50 percent rule and thankfully even though this plant has uh, fibrous roots they do not act as other plants with the same type of root system and that means even if they go dry they're not going to die immediately like other plants in my area do so follow the 50 percent rule meaning in containers just water every time your container dries 50 percent however often that happens that's exactly how often you are going to water this plant and that's going to apply for most container plants if you want to learn more or understand in more details how to water your uh, container plants i have another video where i talk specifically about container watering now you're planting the ground it has shallow roots and fibrous roots remember so for the first year in the ground you can use the finger method which is once your plants in the ground you just stick your finger in this in the potting mix right here all the way down and when you no longer feel moisture on the tip of your finger however long that took that's exactly how often you water in my area that's most likely going to happen daily so for the first summer you want to water frequently right around the root ball and do not worry about the soil around it once your plant gets older you can still use a finger method but then you can probably add another day and then water it's extremely hard to overwater this plant simply because of the type of root system the plant has and this is true for most plants with the same type of roots shallow and fibrous they are very hard to overwater tree structure now this plant right here naturally it's going to be a bush so it likes to branch out all the way from the ground up unless you trim it as a tree so a lot of people in tropical areas actually keep this plant as a hedge they plant a bunch of them in a row and then they just prune them off and then they make us you know like a pony wall and a barrier between yards and you know fences so yes you can do that you can make a hedge out of this plant if you want to now in my area this plant well it doesn't grow the fastest so can you make a hedge out of it yes you can um, but you know it's up to you I like to keep things uh, bushy because more branches mean more flowers more flowers always yields more fruit but it's personal choice uh, the biggest tree I've seen uh, Suriname cherry it's going to, I think it was about 12 feet tall so they do get big I guess not as big as other plants uh, and they do take a long time to reach that height so it's not gonna happen overnight normally the plant that you saw earlier uh, that plant took about I think three to four years to get that size from this size right here so I mean it doesn't happen overnight you're gonna get a few inches a year and what I've noticed uh, in my area at least is when they get top heavy they like to fall over and then you may have to prune them a little bit to train them the way you want them fertilization uh, this plant does not require anything specific in containers you can use any slow release fertilizer that has some nitrogen phosphorus and potassium in it and you're good to go to be honest the numbers are irrelevant as long as you have some nutrients in that fertilizer you put in the containers in the ground all you need is compost and you are good to go it's that simple super easy do not overcomplicate it and if I can do it so can you 
container growing. Now, can you keep this plant in a container? Of course you can. I mean, I have a bunch of them containers and this one's right here. These are cuttings and they have been in this location here for about two years. And I mean, they, they're doing great. They are already root bound, so they need to go in bare containers. Um, so yes, you can keep them in containers for a long time simply because they have shallow roots and fibrous roots and any plant that has a shallow shallow fibrous root system will always do better in a container long term than others but remember your plants will not live in a container indefinitely so as your plants get older you are going to have to either put in a bigger container or you're gonna have to uh, root prune and repotting in the same container so it's not like you're gonna be able to just put in a container and forget about them it's just not gonna work just think of the plant as yourself if you get fat and you're wearing your clothes that you're wearing right now guess what it's not gonna feel comfortable and you're probably gonna need to get bigger size clothes it's the same thing with plants so as they get older and bigger just up pot your plants and they will be okay but you know they don't grow the fastest so you can keep them in containers for a long time without having to worry about them uh, outgrowing their containers too quickly and that brings us to my personal growing tips for Suriname cherry or Brazilian cherry and another name for this plant is also pitanga um, what I've noticed personally from growing this plant for a few years is they can take a lot of cold like I said earlier so they're not be afraid of the winter time they only grow when the night temperatures are extremely hot the hotter the night temperatures the faster your plants going to grow it doesn't matter if the day temperatures are super hot if the night temperatures are cold your plants not going to grow it's just the way it works there's nothing you can do about it so if your plants are shaded in the winter time because well the sun you know moves with the season don't worry about it it's not gonna grow anyway in the winter time another thing with the fruits guys they drop their fruits very easily so if it gets windy and uh, you lose all your fruits it's just the way it works don't worry about it now remember there are two different varieties you got black and you got red well if you grow them from seed they're not true to seed so let me show you we have a bunch of seedlings right here and then this right here we don't know what color they are because usually the ones you grow from grow from seed they take a few years to flower now they flower but they didn't hold any fruits this year so we do not know what colors they are so if you grow them from seed which they are very easy to sprout from seed just keep in mind you're gonna get either red or you're gonna get black so which one you get you know it's just a chance now a lot of people get fixated on the variety should i get a black or should i get a, a red one now to be honest let me tell you my personal experience on the fruit remember the skin tastes like curry leaves and the flesh is extremely sweet that's going to be true for both varieties now the only difference between i've no uh, i've noticed personally between black and red is black is going to be juicier than red and that's going to be the main difference between the two besides the color most people tend to like black simply because we like black color better than darker color fruits are usually more popular than lighter color fruits it's just the way it works i think it's just how we humans view everything in life brighter colors usually catch more attention another tip about growing this plant is once you pot it into a bigger container it takes a, at least a year to root itself in that new container or even in the ground fully before you see any growth on top so if you planted your tree in the ground or if you just put it in a container and you don't see any growth out of it and it's been several months that is normal do not panic don't go buy fertilizers thinking that's going to make your plant grow faster it's just the way it works once the plant is rooted fully in that container you are going to see growth on top that is normal so those are my personal growing tips for Suriname cherry if you have any other questions you can go ahead and comment below and don't forget to like the video subscribe click the bell and i will see you next time